Hello everybody. Uh, this video today is going to be about uh, answering a question that, that I've been kind of pondering for, for a while. Uh, the question is, is whether or not I can take my 2012-ish, I think it was about 2012, I built a powerful gaming computer that I've been using for editing videos for YouTube. And it's been doing fine. I haven't had any trouble uh, with it. it. It chews through video, 1080p video, like uh, like no problem. But it does have some trouble with the 4K 60 frames a second video from the Altel Evo drone. The Mavic that I have, it chews through that just fine. It used to chew through the the X-Stars video just fine. So it's a 60 frames a second uh, situation. It, it uh, renders the video just fine, but it chugs along as far as the playback goes inside Adobe Premiere. So I got to wondering what would happen if I replaced the graphics card with the latest greatest. This is uh, this is my old graphics card and this is from you know the original build. This is a, a Radiance uh, let's see it's a, a Sapphire Radiant 79, 7990 and at the time, this was this was this was it, man. This was the baddest mamba jamba. I played uh, a lot of games on it. Uh, I've never had any problems editing video with it. It's always done a real good job. But I've done some benchmarks recently. This is my problem, according to the benchmarks. This video card is where the bottleneck is, is happening, as near as I can figure so far. I thought I'd replace the video card and just kind of see if that improves the performance. And if it does, maybe I can get a couple more years out of the uh, processor and everything that I, that I have. The processor in my computer currently is a 4790K, you know, uh, Intel i7. Yeah, I've got a really good motherboard. I'll replace the video card with this. If this doesn't do the trick, if I'm still having playback issues, this also should speed up the rendering, you know, because a Radiant card doesn't really help with the uh, with the rendering at all. So the CUDA cores and, uh, and an NVIDIA card, you know, help with the hardware rendering, um, and it should really help with some playback issues as well. At least that's what I'm hoping, fingers crossed, you know, that way, I can get a little bit more time out of my uh, computer before I have to, you know, dump a bunch of money into it. But if I end up, if it ends up not working, I'll overclock the snot out of it because I do have the the 4790K, so I can uh, go ahead and just overclock everything and try that and see if that fixes the problem. And if that doesn't fix the problem, well then we're going to have to make a decision on a new motherboard and a new processor and some new memory and yada 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 so it's going to be a you know a 700 bucks or something you know give or take so kind of hoping for the best i'm going to go ahead and install this real quick and uh, i've already run the benchmarks for my current setup and we'll match them up and see how they come out to uh, once i install this see what the changes are all right, talk to you in a minute. Hey guys, I just uh, wanted to drop back in real quick after I got the new video card out of the box. Just wanted to kind of compare s some things, just just because I found it interesting. Maybe you will too. I haven't been into the computer hardware hobby, or you know, you know, for a while, for at least um, I'm wanting to say at least seven years five years, five years maybe. So I haven't been into it for a long time. You know, things have changed drastically. This this is my old card. And this thing is, you know, huge. Here is the new card, which is like, I don't know exactly, but it's probably like at least, I, I don't even know how much more powerful this card is. But this is the, this is the new card. This is the NVIDIA 2060. What's interesting is it must be considerably more efficient because it's only got one power plug. The 7970 has uh, two power plugs. It's got two eight pin power connectors. So this thing, I remember that you could cook breakfast on this thing. I mean, it would, uh, it would wind up pretty good. 
and this one is uh, just got one plug and it's way lighter it feels like half is half the weight of this one this one's like super heavy and way bigger look look at the look at the difference they're lined up look at how much longer the 7970 is I mean I cannot believe that they got this much power in this little tiny compact little graphics card it's 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 amazing anyway I just thought that was interesting and I'll get back to you after I get this thing installed alright guys I'm back it's a uh, it's a different day took a little bit longer than uh, than I had anticipated to get this information uh, calculated and uh, do some uh, tweaking and whatnot see if we could come up with any kind of uh, usable uh, results you know that I could uh, ultimately the goal was to try and uh, squeak by without upgrading my computer um, I think I did that but just to but just to a like just barely skating by kind of situation um, it's not perfect so let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at some of the results that I came up with and uh, let's start with the gaming the gaming uh, test first you know testing the gaming performance of my uh, old computer so let's go with that first and uh, <clears throat> let's bring up uh, the test results I tested this in Firestrike. Any of you guys uh, not familiar with Firestrike? It's a pretty popular uh, benchmark, and it's one of the ones I had on hand, and it was useful for what I needed it to to do. So you'll notice all the way on the right, uh, we're just gonna th this score here and all these results on the far right are just uh, for comparison purposes. This is the the test results for my brand new laptop that I that I just purchased just recently purchased the test results all the way to the left that's the test results as my home computer sat untouched without doing anything to it so you can see that the that the difference between those two scores is, is pretty far it's pretty wide gap so the score in the middle is uh, is the score after changing just the graphics card from a 7970 to a actually a Radeon 7970 to the Nvidia 2060 so that's just that one uh, upgrade and I was kind of hoping for a better gaming performance and also much better uh, performance in video editing so let's move on this is uh, Firestrike, which basically is an older uh, test, and it tests uh, DX11. So let's uh, go over to DX12 test, which is uh, Time Spy. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a DX12 based, um, you know, gaming benchmark. And again, all the way to the far right is my new laptop. Center is the uh, my computer before I did anything to it before I touched anything before I upgraded anything and Far left is with just changing the graphics card So um, So we we got a, a huge improvement as you can see by just changing the, the graphics card as far as gaming goes uh, more than double the gaming performance uh, if that's all I was looking for, then I'd be set. I'd be I'd be in business. I could play pretty much anything I want. Uh, I would say I would venture to say I would even go as far as to say anything I want. Uh, 1080p, definitely anything I want, kind of situation. So this is uh, this is kind of what can we take from these test results? We can you know kind of definitively tell that an old processor from 2012 with a modern graphics card can can game <laughs> I mean can game uh, really well um, so you can build you know a computer all the way back to the 47 or the you know the 4790k that's what this processor is 
uh, and still game like a Mamba Jamba. Um, definitely there's not a problem with the CPU department. So if you're wanting to game on a budget, this is proof that you don't need the latest greatest processor. I mean, that's pretty much proof of that. If that's your goal, you can get out of it a lot cheaper than most of the people on the internet are telling you that you can. And that kind of proves it. So let's uh, let's see what what happened when I uh, did a all core lock. Basically, for those of you who don't know, it takes all four cores on the uh, CPU and locks them together, so the boost clocks stay locked together. And they go up and down at the same time, and you can get you know a pretty decent boost just by doing that. And it and it's you know better for my setup, for my particular setup as far as cooling and, and stuff like that goes uh, without boosting the frequency, but without boosting the, you know, the clock frequency. So let's see here. On the right is the test with the stock CPU settings not changing anything. And the test on the left is with just locking the cores together, doing a core lock. And got a little bit of a performance uh, boost there but what's interesting about this is let me show what happened in comparison to my um, to my laptop score when I locked the the cores together if you look at the CPU score here the uh, laptop is again all the way to the far right um, the CPU score is 4593 and with the core lock I got 4,543, so I ended up closing that gap to basically their within margin of error type situation. So it's interesting that a, that a you know a desktop CPU from 2012 is matching the performance of a new uh, Gen you know what Gen Gen 9. Is that right? Gen 9? Uh, I Core i7. You know, so it's a, uh, you know, it's a laptop uh, CPU. So the, you know, so the clocks are, are lower, but still, I mean, we're talking about nine years or something like that. So it's just interesting that I was able to match the performance of that CPU in most areas, in most areas, except for the you know, processes that take advantage of uh, more cores and more threads and stuff like that. Because you've got a a four core, eight thread processor from my desktop computer from way back in the day, and the new one is a six core processor, twelve thread. So they're kind of uh, equal performers. Just interesting. Okay, so let's move on to what I really needed to know, and that was the performance. Um, doing doing uh, editing. Let's see here the 4K um, the 4K 60 frames a second test. Let me show you this. Bring this up. Um, so we got a score of 45 playback and 45 encoding score. So not great. Not usable really. Um, that's why I've been struggling so hard with encoding the drone footage. That's exactly why. That's um, okay. So that's what it was before doing anything. So now adding the new video card. What happened then? Okay. So here we go. Here's 4K, 30 frames a second, 50 megabytes per second. So we got a playback score of 57, which is within the margin of error. So um, I'm going to say same-o, same-o. Uh, the export score, which is the rendering score, and here we went way up. We, uh, we went considerably up. So the, what this tells me, I'd, I'd say that this is proof of a couple of things. Uh, one is the video card did nothing for the playback performance, uh, the live playback performance. And what that is is the performance of playing multiple streams while editing. And multiple streams come from uh, color grading, from multiple camera angles, multiple clips, things of that nature. 
um, or just playing a single stream. It's, uh, the, it tests all of those things, different resolutions, different playback resolution. It tests a lot of different things to give a, a score. And the score is 57, which is not um, really great. That's not usable. So basically, the, that score did not change. The encoding score did, in fact, change. It went, it went quite high. I mean, 86 is, you know, is definitely a great score for, um, for an older computer like this. And I attribute that to the CUDA cores in the NVIDIA card. So that's proof that this card with the CUDA cores in the NVIDIA card definitely raised that score drastically. Um, bottom line, guys, is that I can't make that work for editing 4K video, doing color grading, and stuff like that. It's just not going to it's just not going to be great. It's just not going to work. It's not going to be a good experience for me. What I have to do is I have to like do it in sections and then render it. It's a really slow, painful process, and um, I've just decided to upgrade the computer, um, replace the motherboard, the memory, the processor, and the hard drive. So um, I'm going to replace those things along with the new graphics card. And I will run these benchmarks again as soon as I get the computer built, and let's see what happens. Uh, I know that uh, there's some of you out there kind of struggling with 4K footage yourself, and maybe this video might be useful for you. So uh, any comments or suggestions or anything, drop them into the comments. If you, you, know, if you have any questions of your own, uh, drop them in the comments. And uh, in the next video, I will you know, have the computer upgraded, um, up and running stable, and we'll check it out and see how it performs then. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope this was helpful to somebody. We'll talk to you later.